Hello, this is Excel Video 80. I'm Nate Moore. We're working on this collections chart like we have for some time now. Last time we looked at the primary horizontal axis, this time the primary vertical axis. Uh, right now we've got the default axis. There's some easy shortcuts to display these numbers, say in thousands like that. And Excel will show you thousands and you can move this thousands wherever you want to put it. But that may save you a little bit of space there, particularly as you get to bigger numbers. Or you can go back. Millions, billions, log scale, all that's not going to help me with those numbers. We'll go back to the default axis like that. And then if you go to axes and more options, number, fill, line color, all of this you've seen before in a couple of different um, settings. Alignment is similar to what we had. In fact, we still have Dr. A going at a bit of an angle from last time. What I want to spend our time on today is axis options. And I think you'll find this uh, helpful in a variety of settings. Let's maybe put this about right there so you can see it. What Excel is doing uh, up here is it's saying the minimum and maximum values in this chart are going from zero to half a million. And the, it's doing that automatically. And you can see the automatically calculated values that Excel is doing here. If you wanted to maybe play some games with this, what you could do is if you went from, say, let's yeah, maybe 450,000, and then we started at 250,000. Now, what we can do by making these jumps just $20,000, let's click close for a second so you can see. It makes these gaps look really like they're really big jumps. Dr. D is making these heroic efforts in collections if you don't focus on what the scale is over here. By the same token, if we come over right click format axis and let's make this, in fact, let's just make it zero. Let's do zero and then say, Let's do, what is that, two and a half million. If we do something like that, now instead of what we had before, now instead of those big gaps, now it looks very, very small because of what we've done on the y-axis side. We've gone in, I'm going to right click and format axis, and we've played with this. And if we come back and do that auto again, you can see that we're back to a scale from zero to a quarter of a million. These major units are the lines that go across here, and you'll see it's every 50,000. If that looks too busy to you, it's easy to come in and say, let's do it every 100,000. And now there's half as many lines, and it's easy to control that. The other thing you can do is we can do, um, the minor units are every 20,000, and we could do minor units if we wanted to, maybe on the inside, and put those little teeny minor units right there, and maybe help our users see what we're doing a little more without putting a whole bunch of grid lines on there. So I'm going to take the minor units off. We'll let this go back to auto. The first thing you do when you look at a chart is look at that y-axis scale and make sure that you're not, you know, is it zero to, to you know, 2.5 million, or is it zero to 500,000, or what's the scale over there? We, that's going to be critical, and that's how to adjust it. You can put the values in reverse order, so you put zero at the top and make them go down like that. You can do a log scale, which really doesn't help me here. You can display the units, and again, hundreds, thousands, and all these. This just does what we had before, and we can do it in thousands. And if we're going to do that, checking that box puts thousands right there. Turn those back off. Major and tick mark types. This is what we saw before, inside, outside, and cross. Where the axis labels go next to the axis. If you do high, what Excel does is it throws them. Oh, let's just throw this off the screen for a minute. It puts them all the way over here. And if you do low, it puts them back where you're used to seeing them over there. Last thing I want to show you is horizontal axis crosses. Right now, this is automatic. You can make the horizontal axis cross at say two, five, zero, at 250,000 like this and this is where it puts it on the horizontal axis with these below it. 
you can choose to do it that way or if you want to do something similar you could put the minimum fixed at two five zero one two three and then we'll put this back to automatic and you can put the horizontal axis you can make it cross at two hundred fifty thousand by making it the minimum or you can come down here and force it to cross or you can force it to the maximum value and turn it upside down like that and you can do that as well a variety of options for the y-axis critical to understand this is if you're looking at somebody else's chart to make sure you understand where the scale is here so you can understand if these are really big jumps if they're really small jumps or something in between hope that was helpful for you thanks for watching